The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Friday, the 23rd of September. We've got a week to go, and then the month of September wraps up. Look at this chart here. We're very close to making a leg. See down in the monthly chart of the Dow. <clears throat> the low today is uh, 29,643, so it has taken out the left side low of June, which is 29,653. So, let me do this as a as a, a kind of a quick overview, and then there's a lot of things we will go to. A number of people have asked me to look at particular charts, which are very important at this particular point, which includes the uh, semiconductor uh, index, uh, or SMHs, the ETF. So with the Dow down 392, I'll just quickly show you the chart formations. So chart formations haven't changed. You still get your arch formation, in this case going to be PG, the one-minute chart. You still get your left side, right side price time match. You still get, if there's a break of the left side low within two bars or three bars, if it doesn't break and close above it, you can go quite a bit lower. We've just seen that on a very short term, near term, I'm talking about the one-minute chart. We're real close to a little bit of a bounce here. Making the 3698 level really important in the E mini, December E mini. And any move that holds above for five minutes can move above 3718, then touch 3722. Oh, sorry, it's 3720. It says that in this time frame during my show, there could be a touch of the 3724 200 period moving average again. But uh, we'll just have to see if that, that occurs. Okay, enough for that. Now, what I want you to do is this. I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to go from the, even though there's a week to go, I'm going to go to the monthly charts and say we've started leg C down in the monthly chart of the Dow. And I'm still going to say at this particular time, 10.08 a.m. on the 23rd of September, 2022. <coughs> Excuse me. So still not uh, good enough yet. Remnants of this COVID. Most importantly, what we're looking at, if you've spent almost nine months in this consolidation, this monthly chart so far is still great. That means that any further deterioration starts to open up areas that there are no support levels in. So you've got to be really careful. That's the Dow. I mean, looking at the monthly, the weekly chart got repelled in the arch formation, the dreaded H formation. That means we've got two weeks to uh, close, maybe three, but I usually say two to close above the 29,653 low that was made the week of June the 17th. And this is, okay, good. Now you can bounce. You can bounce to the the, uh, uh, the resistance above or a gap or a candle. But you're probably not going, since you've gone below the left side low, you're not going above that uh, 34,281 high of uh, June, I think it was June the 16th. Uh, you, uh, sorry, August the 16th. Uh, in this particular move. Okay. Let's look at the S&P because I'm, I'm wanting the big picture. And the, a lot of questions came in within the, the, the patterns that you always look at. What are the most important patterns that are relevant at this particular time, especially with the weekly uh, close Friday today at 4 o'clock? What are you looking for? Well, I'm just going to first of all say from the acceleration down, Look at this. We've got just a very minor trough D since the high that was made at about the 32,200s all the way down. So we haven't even had a decent trough. If you look at the S&P, it's the same thing. Just a little minor uh, trough E and now we're in an F to the downside. 
The MACD is very weak. Stochastic is now at the area where you can start to expect some kind of a rebound at 5%. The unbalanced volume, though, is the one that's saying to me, we are really close in an oversold, con oversold condition. The question came in, um, wh why are you not talking about a buying opportunity rather than you keep saying that uh, for subscribers to the opening call, we are so short and we might be trying for little tiny long positions, but with very tight stops and you've raised a huge amount of cash. Why aren't you talking about putting the cash to work? Because you have to wait for certain things. You have to have a lot of patience in the market. You can't have the preconception that says, hey, there's a fantastic buy coming up. Um, I'm just loading the boat as soon as it comes. Even that, there are certain conditions that we want to see. What I would like to see today is that the market closes lousy. It, it, it tries to rally and then it just fails at the end. And then over the weekend, you just get this plethora of bad news, uh, inflation, uh, stock market. How's your portfolio doing? Um, they've avoided that a lot lately. It just uh, up until about a week or so ago, it's just started to come into effect. When you get the general population and you get your local newspaper saying, oh, inflation, this, inflation, that, um, then you're getting close to a pretty decent, not just a short term, but a, a more the, the magnitude of the bounce. I always say that the last little bit going to a V-shaped low, um, you can see sometimes 15 or even 20% down, and then you get the V-shaped bottom and it rallies back up. But you have to go up very sharply to erase that 20% down. So this is exactly the moment that I'm saying. We are right on the cusp of becoming so oversold that there's going to be buying opportunities. But I went through uh, the entire uh, X XLP I'm going to get to all the different indexes, but this is part of what I wanted to do today. The XLP, which is the S&P Select Consumer Staples Spider Fund. And I have to tell you, most of them were looking like this. Most of them were very much lower. Yes, you have a couple, and I mentioned them to subscribers this morning that be watching very closely. I mean, how do you play a GIS, which how silly that was uh, three days ago when it was down in the 75s, just even for a bounce would have been a really good position. General Mills, Fruz, just for the moment, they're still able to uh, ameliorate some of their costs by, uh, you know, pushing it on to the consumer at a certain point. That's going to stop. But look at this. It made an all-time high. It popped up yesterday. went over 81 today. It's at 80.44. The weekly charts in leg E, the monthly charts in leg E. But how do you play this? I mean, <laughs> there's a bit of a risk here because you could get it, and then it just has a very normal breath, you know, just a breather. It takes it takes an inhalation, and you see it drop down below the gap up from the 77 level, and it's trading at 80. So that's a big, uh, that's a risk. So it's very difficult to know how to play, even the areas of the defensive. This is defensive uh, XLPs, consumer staples, defensive. So I've gone through all of them, and there are a few that look like they could work, but it's kind of tough. So I'll be back in a moment. Let's see if we did get that bounce right here in the E-mini. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a bounce. Let's see. Big deal. Uh, as I say, I would like a lousy close and then a horrible early Monday, and then we make a nice recovery for a few days or a week. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Getting back uh, to the market, we'll, we'll talk about the uh, question that came in. It's been coming in for a long time about the three-gap play that was in the SPY, but it is also pertinent to the uh, S&P cash uh, what we're looking at is, so the question basically pertains to how does that relate to the down move that we've got and what was it uh, uh, portending? And you remember what I said is I, I like to see coincidence factors when we get a change of trend. Either it's what I call the silent doji. You can see that on the 17th of August, day after the high, very tiny uh, doji candle and then a pull back. Um, you had the island reversals. All of those were compounding what could have been uh, a sharp move down, but we didn't know until it was accelerating. For me, the big thing was as the MACD crossed, positive, crossed negative on the 22nd, that's the day that we uh, uh, started the short position uh, via the DOG, which we still have, um, it's the space between the red 26 period exponential moving average, just slow moving average, and the nine period differential, the green one. That to me usually indicates, and when it deflects lower. So the question, the, another question came up. Um, uh, the question is if I can get to it here. Okay. How does the Jeff Wave see the tide of the weekly charts short on a pop or go long on the dip? So, um, as I'm looking at this right now, I believe we're getting to an oversold condition that says if there is some kind of a V-shaped turnaround and it really has to occur, we have to get a lousy close today and then just horrible news over the weekend and just everyone's selling on Monday. That won't be, that'll be like the June, something like the June low. But in this particular case, the question I have is right here, is this where you would short the pop-up or um, go long on the dip? And for me, for my subscribers, I'm looking at this saying, we are going to prepare, and we have already started uh, thinking about what we want to do, or at least I have, and I'll talk about it tomorrow in my uh, market overview, 
a video that I do um, every weekend, usually uh, 40 minutes, maybe even an hour. Um, it's almost like a webinar, but I like to do it to be able to cover all the different areas that we're looking at, why we're looking at it, what's going on. Just a good, give a good sense of at least where I stand in the marketplace. And if that's the case, I would prefer initially there might be one or two stocks that are waiting and waiting and waiting for that could have a really decent rally. But if they are too expensive, uh, not expensive, I mean, if they're too pricey and they're triple digits, I would much prefer to go to lower price ones because you get the same, you get even a better percentage gain if you time it correctly. I want to still keep conserving as much cash as possible. And we might go into the two or three times long position on a small position and just garner as much as we can like we did before back in June, gone as much as possible and then just get out and that's it and then have to wait. So the answer is I would not be looking to short a pop-up if it is. I mean, we don't even know. I, this is speculation that there could be some kind of a turnaround. Monday. My timing, everything about it says um, between right now and Monday or Tuesday, there should be some kind of a relief turnaround. I don't want just a relief turnaround. I want an exhaustion move to the downside so that it isn't just a pop-up. It's a really decent rally. It's a rally in which you can start to think of, okay, is this the rally where I can start if I haven't got enough money out of the market? Is this the time where I could start to think of taking money out of the market? Because uh, the market is still so weak and there's still so many negatives. Those are the things that we'll be deciding on. And the only way I feel I can do it for subscribers to opening call is to try to garner as much as possible in the quickest time with the least amount of money with the most leverage. And you know what your stops are. They'll still be the usual very tight stops. But that's the way, I, that's the way I'm looking at it. All right. So I hope I've answered those questions. And, and the three gap, remember, I, it was one that I had initially said, I had actually t I told the person who asked me the question, I said, sp uh, call Tom, speak to Tom, because Tom does a lot of work with the three gap play all the decades here. Uh, he's always spoken. Those are the things that he looks at in great detail. How, how do how do you deal with three gap plays? And the way I look at it is I just treat it as if it's a single, it's just the notation continues. P trough A, then trough B was in the in the S and P right there at the um, uh, forty one fifty six fifty uh, no forty one nineteen ninety seven low of the twenty fourth. That was B. Then it just popped up with an A minus because it went to a dreaded H pattern and failed. So this is very important to me. And as I said, I would like a lousy close today going into Monday. But wow, if Monday doesn't turn into a turnaround day. <laughs> Things are not looking good. And as I said, this is a very interesting phase because um, for, for I'm, I'm showing my, um, my newsletter today when I sent it off. It's one of the shortest news I've got. Um, I've got, we've got just a few stocks still remain, still along the, still along the DBA. The, that's the uh, uh, DBA is the DBA uh, Agricultural Fund. Still uh, long, very long term, long the, the Dow Diamonds from 210.99 back in uh, 3rd of April 2020. Uh, we, we tried for two, three days to try to get the Dow with a 1% uh, stop, the Diamonds, just to see if that it was going to work over the last couple of days. Didn't work. Uh, out, done, finished. Still holding the DOG. We're out of Bank of America. Look at this. Bank of America. BAC. Is that ugly or is that ugly? I mean, this is, we've, we've had this as a trade maybe five or six times over the last six years or so, and we've had really good gains, and then we would get out as it made a high and it started to come back down until we were completely out. And this time we were in for just a brief period. We took a, a very small loss, and I said, nope, that's it, we're done. And here it is in leg E to the downside in the daily, making the H pattern of the weekly chart. It hasn't done it yet, but it's forming the H pattern. And the, the monthly has gone from 50.11 uh, back in uh, the double top back in the February of 2022. 
and hit a low of 30, and now it's rebounded, but it's now 31.51. So that's the XLF. I mean, the XLF, I, I want the banks to do well right now. I don't, I don't see how we can have a really strong, strong rally without the financials participating, especially when the bonds are down at 105.39. That means that the yields, uh, the yields, let's go to the T and X. Uh, look at this. This is a leg D, a leg E, leg F. Uh, it could be a recycle, but I'm calling it an F for now in the daily chart. It's a leg. I don't know whether this is a G or a brand new uh, move to. Uh, it has to be a G. That's all there is to it. It's a G or an A in the weekly chart. So, yeah, maybe. Oh, oh, oh. I need to do this. Thank goodness I put these, these, these lines in so I can see them in the long term. Look at that trend line that I drew months ago. Look at that trend. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Javan Dow's down 410. is down 51. And we've got some stocks to look at. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So let's just look at the uh, what we were looking at before, which is the uh, ten-year. Uh, did I just type it incorrectly? Yes, I did. Ten-year is the uh, T and X dot X. There we go. So you see this orange brown thick brown line in the monthly chart whoops let's just move this one right here there it is that's the yield the 10-year yield and i'm taking it back a long way and i wanted to point out that if you look historically we've been here before it's not as i've been saying for quite a while yes the interest rates are high but we've been here before 
And uh, the most important aspect about it is we've even been higher. We've been at 53.16, 5.316 in the tenure back in June of 2007. Uh, of course, it was October of 2007 that we made that top, uh, major top. But we have been here. It's the implication that the Fed is pushing and pushing and pushing and wants even higher rates. That's the scary part, number one. Number two is I, I'm hearing reports from people saying that they've got bills to say that the natural gas, I, I haven't got that yet. Natural gas is going to go up uh, 40 or 50 percent from November, uh, something like that. Uh, I, our electricity bills are going high. Those are the things that are really scary. So this is in the TNX. Yes, we look like we're getting a tad overbought in the um, actual price itself because of this extension. Oh, I've missed one. That's should I, I did a little too quickly. Sorry, I'm going to do that again. That's a D. E, oh, that's right. It is. is it is correct. I just uh, didn't write, type it in. There's your D, and there's your E. Now, it could be a recycle, Chapman Wave, oh, it's not not yet an official recycle because it took four sessions to break above that peak D. But this could be an F slash B. But it does say almost like the dollar. Look at the dollar. I'll just go back to the dollar, DXY. That extension up. I'm calling it a leg C. It could be an F slash C. But just for the moment, uh, everything's positive. The 86% in, in the stochastic MACD is good. A 9 is way above the 14 so, so far, I'm calling it a C, saying that uh, it's, it's extended high and it's a leg C in the monthly chart in the dollar. So um, I'm trying to put the, the package together here to say that there are a number of instruments that, yes, they look either very toppy or very bottomy, but you have to wait and to answer the question, um, pop up or uh, buy or sell, I think you have to have the patience to actually see that, that turnaround coming. And it might, in other words, if today we suddenly have a big rally and towards the end of the day, the Fed speaks at about 2 o'clock or whatever they do, and all of a sudden you get a rally and the market is down 30 points or up 150 points, I think then what you've done is you've delayed the potential for that, that, that exacerbation of the downside going into a Monday or a Tuesday. It has to really be a Friday or a Monday. It's usually not a Friday except for that March low that we got March the 6th. Uh, of 2009 when we went along the, the diamonds via the options and we, very soon after we went straight, we added the uh, calls. So that that's very different. That was in 2009. Uh, usually it's a Monday uh, for a big turnaround, a really serious turnaround. And that's kind of what I'm hoping for here, but hope is not part of the game. Preparation is part of the game. So, um, yes, that dollar is, is a monster. Now, uh, let me just go through the questions as I got them. Uh, there was one question about, uh, first question came up, could I look at, oh, where did it go? Um, yes, could I look at, was it SPO something, SPO, SP, SPRO, SPRO, I forgot to write it down. Yes, SPRO. Uh, this is... Uh, Spira Therapeutics, man, I'll tell you, these micro therapeutics are able to go from the single digits or uh, the one or the two area and just skyrocket. This went from 0.81 the other day to yesterday's spike to uh, $3 at about three, $3.20 or so. And today it's trading at $2.23. So the question uh, was, what about it? And it's in a leg E. I think it's going to probably make a peak E today and I wouldn't be surprised if it does do some pullback because this is very much news related biotech stocks do that but just look at parameters what I said is the 210 level needs to hold just on the very I'm talking about on a 10 15 20 minute chart that's where it needs to hold 233 ish will be very strong resistance and if at any time it's so in the next day or so if it starts to trade underneath two, uh, 185 that's the low that was made on the gap up yesterday um, that's just going to suggest that it, it's kind of done for now and then it'll take a little while before it, it, it recuperates and has another big spike to the upside. Next question, I just want to go through these questions because I had the XOM. XOM is the um, is ExxonMobil, multinational, 105.57 was the high back in the week of June the 6th, no, June the 10th of this year. It's doing the dreaded H pattern. 
uh, let's see, yeah. So this pattern starts off like a cup formation, and then all of a sudden it stalls, and now you've got to look at it very differently. You have to say, there's a chance with oil pulling back like this. This is an economic story more than an oil story, and you've gone smashed to the downside. You're just above the 84.42 200 period moving average at 85.49, down five points today alone, 85.47. And I think, as I said before, crude oil could be in play and the multinationals could be in play. But I think limited upside, and I'm going to have to watch the downside a lot. But at any point, they could have a sudden spiral to the upside. But I think that the general tide, the the more the bigger picture, is saying that both in the daily and the weekly charts, there's a lot of weakness. But the monthly chart of ExxonMobil is still looking great. Um, C L H C E L H. Yeah, this is one that's been on my list, Celsius Holdings, Thermogenic, uh, Calorie-Burning Beverages. I believe that was the question. Yeah, I've followed this for a little while, but we've done nothing with it. It did 118.19 on the 25th of August. I always have a terrible time. You know, we had a monster. What was it, monster? We have, we've had a couple of um, stocks that are in this area of either calorie burning or doing something with some kind of a beverage. And they have this history of flaming out. They have in spectacular moves, and then all of a sudden, they, they just gone. And this is this head and shoulders. Look at this beautiful head and shoulders. Um, I had even thought of it as a short, and then I thought, well, it's also a story stock. Anything can happen at any point. Just stay away. Although now I think it has a target of 76, the 200-period moving average. It's at 85. This is not acting very well at all. Peak D in the daily, peak D in the weekly, and leg E possibly and almost certainly, in fact, with a week to go, that if it can't break above 98, it's a 95, 85 right now. I don't even have to say 98. If it can't go to 93 in the next week, that's going to be a peak E with a double top with a lousy technical picture on the right side. So, yes, I do not do not like CLH. Next question I had was, uh, C S S C H W. This is one that's on our list. This is Schwab. It's actually holding pretty damn well when you think about what's going on here. 7741 was the most recent high, August the 14th. Pulls back to about the 68, 69 area. Bounces up to 75, and now it's trading down sharply to down dollar 47 at 70.59. This is on my watch list because if this market does start to come back at any point. The IAI, IAI and the, which is the I shares of the broker dealer index, which is acting way worse than Schwab. It, it doesn't look good at all. It's an 87 Wait, 99 was high back on August the 18th, August the 16th. And here it is, uh, 12 points lower. Oh, not good action at all. And the monthly chart is also looking good. So I would just say hold off on Schwab. It will be one of those you want to be looking at. Maybe for a bounce on Monday, but at this particular point, just be very careful. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, everyone. We're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour on this 23rd day of September, Friday. We're looking at the Dow down 447 points. At 29,627, the S&P's down 65 at, uh, whoa, 36.92. Looking at the E-mini, you can see it's just stuck in this rectangle formation, just keeps making this W formation, just cannot get strength. And until it can start to trade for about 15 or 20 minutes in the 37.17s, the 37.20, 200 period moving average in the one-minute chart is still a repellent area all right let's get back to our story with questions that came in so yes i'm saying as a quick trade if everything turns around on monday you could have something like a schwab um i, I i'm thinking that it's going to be risky to go into select stocks and maybe the etfs themselves a generic would be the best way just initially to get in and then you can make decisions because these things have to hold we're looking at sava cassava sciences a biotech stock at 42.36, uh, down 8.70, uh, down 16, 17%. Made a high yesterday at peak D. Always looking for peak D in the Chapman wave. The last one was back in August, around about the 17th or 18th. This one was yesterday on the 22nd at 51.59. This is a stock that was trading down the, the 15 to 13 area just uh, a month or two ago. And uh, this is a spectacular move. A lot of short covering is a biotech. Um, and I'm just suggesting that uh, I actually like, this is a biotech, but I like the chart action very, very much. Even if it is short covering, there are other things going on. But it does look like there's a chance that over the period of the next week, going into the end of next week, uh, they, they could be, uh, say, it's at 42.26 now. You could see a, 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 some kind of a digestive phase between 37 and 35. Uh, it's not impossible. And that it would be best. It, it does seem to prefer to take time before the next big move to the upside rather than just to continue straight up. Uh, next question was, uh, is it time for lithium? L-T-H-M. You know... Oh, man, how many times have I got to re-notate these things? Uh, when, when, my, when my trade station shuts down suddenly, unlike some other programs that constantly are um, saving, even though I do save, when it comes back, very often it comes back in a different, it's like the, a library, and then the charts that I had that were saved a lot of them disappear if I haven't looked at them for a, a while. And um, a, a new lot comes up. And the new lot has some of the other old ones so that I'm always renotating. They are there somewhere. But I, I've never been able to figure out how to get to the library slot that says, this is the way the file that you were at 
when you got shut down. But so lithium, I'm watching it very closely. It's at 30.38. Uh, what's the exact title? Title is uh, Live and Corporation. Gosh, I remember even the other day I notated and I wrote it up. I had all these different lithium stocks. Let me just look at LIT. It doesn't look exactly the same. No, it doesn't. So the Global X Lithium and Battery Tech Fund, um, this is acting very, very weakly. So let me just do this. Uh, LTHM, I need to just make sure that I am talking apples to apples. So let me just do this. Click uh, and just type in what does stock LT. H M G, there you are, and it says a uh, little, little live event. I love this. Uh, I have to go all the way down. What what does it do? There we go. Okay. Uh, Livent is a fully integrated lithium company. The company manufactures lithium for use in a range of lithium products. Yeah. So um, I, it's a one of the better ones. There was another one that I looked at uh, that was also doing very well. I just don't have in front of me now my special sheet that I had with all the different sectors and stocks that I wanted to follow. Um, so LTHM. I like it. It's, it. It has a much better chart pattern. Is it, it is in a leg, possibly a leg F in the monthly chart. Is it at a B in the... Um, in the in the weekly chart, the only way I could count this was to make that low, which it was in July, the low that you have to start the new wave count. So it's holding steady. If if my the question came in from someone who I suspect already has a position, so I'm going to just speculate. If you've got a position in it and it's from lower down, I would just hold it for now. Let's see on Tuesday. Let's look at it again on Tuesday. Right now, it's just pulling back because of the the market. But actually, it looks like it, it's one of the very few stocks within a particular sector that is leading and is still holding very well. I like it. Would I buy it now? I just have to say 30.59. I would probably say I want to wait another day or two. I'd rather be paying up a little bit than to buy it now when, in fact, it could gap down to the 28th on Monday if the market is because it's acting very poorly here. It's down 3%. Uh, on the day, and that just says to me, it could be a little bit vulnerable. But I do like it. It's actually going to go on my watch. I've already got it on my watch list, but I'm writing it down again with a circle. So I hope that helps you. Um, question came in, ZTS. As, is that Zoots? Oh, I used to have this totally notated. is isn't notated at all right now. Yes, this is Zoots, Inc. And I... I it always sounds to me like it's a, a dry cleaning company, but in fact, it, I can't remember what it does. It was something quite important. Uh, it made a high at about 250 back in December of last year. It's trading at 150 right now. So um, this is one of those that I would put on my list as a watch stock. I just don't think there's any rush to get into it right now. So let me just see. What does stock ZTS do? Here we go, ZTS. Yes. Yeah, there it is. Um, zoo, oh, diagnostic research. Oh, there are developed, manufactures, and commercializes animal health medicines. Oh, right, vaccines and diagnostic products. You know, I love this when I kept reading about it, and it's the same with those uh, chewing and all those stocks that are animal focused, and they have just been decimated. And I, I can see, I mean, I look at my, my office window here, and I just, every every hour of the day, I see at least a couple of people walking their dog. Everybody's got a dog. So this is the same thing. Look, Chewy, oh, you see, this all notated. And Chewy's down at 30 after hitting the 50s. Actually, it had an all-time high in the 120 area. So all this is what I was saying to subscribers. I've been, I've been going through all the, I mean, hundreds of stocks, and they all have to move up in unison to really make a difference. And this is in the same category. So I hope I'm asking you, answering the question, uh, what about Myrna? Yeah, Myrna's the same thing. So I, I, someone just typed into uh, YouTube, uh, Biden to announce 1.5 billion to fight U.S. opio opioid crime uh, crisis. You know, we are, we are spending money. A lot of this is that all the stuff is on the books. They just need to be implemented. 
You don't have to keep spending as much money. You've got to use your your money wisely at this particular point. So Myrna, I, I, it's this Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. It goes to 479.49 August of 2021. And here it is at 122. I, that is a huge decline, and it doesn't look like it's going to be held very soon. So no, I, I think it's, it's kind of done. It was the largest piece. Yes, thank you, s and uh, So CTS, uh, keep it on your list, but I don't know how to know. I'll be back in a moment. Bowser Chapman, Dallas at 450. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here, and we're going to go to George in Boston. Hi George, how are you? Good Basil, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Well, at least I'm getting better. Let's put it that way. And I'm hoping yeah, to play tennis again. I hope you again. get better with your little cold in. What? I hope you get better with your cold. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I had COVID actually, so uh, but I'm way, way better now. Thank you. Good. I haven't talked to you in years. Basil, I have a question. Yes. On the wave counts, I've gone back to 2000. Yes. And on the SPY and SPX. Yes. And every single time, it went down either to a B on the downside. Yes. Or a C. Yes. It bounced. And, and, and when it went to a C, there was a positive C candle, and then yeah. it rallied. But this time, okay, if you're looking at the chart on this round down, you get the C 
and it looks like a negative candle, not yet, but going to a C. Am I right? You're talking about the monthly chart, right? The monthly chart. Yep, and absolutely. And the irony of the whole thing, out of all the charts that I look at, the major charts, everyone yes. made from a D to an E, F, or even a G in the monthly chart, only the S&P has made this B. And that is totally fascinating as far as I'm concerned. There's no other way to count it. And you're absolutely correct. In fact, I've got it notated here. Most of the time, it only goes to a B um, and then, or an A or a B on the trough down on the downside. And seldom does it go to a C. And then there's usually a very strong rally. So right. um, that's a very good point. So you know what I'm going to do? Because we're going to run out of time any minute now. On Monday... Right. We'll talk yeah. about it, uh, and we'll have a very much clearer picture, because who knows, by Monday we might make that leg C to the downside. Hey, George, very good observation. Thank you. Okay. We'll be back. For, I mean, I'll be back for the news, folks, and then I'm out. Have a wonderful weekend, and just as Dave White would say, stay frosty. And uh, we, I, we're expect, I, at least I'm expecting some kind of a reversal early next week, but how strong would it be is the question.